if a person is moving towards a plane mirror by speed v, the image will be moving towards the mirror. This is towards the mirror by the same speed. Then if it's velocity, it will be minus v. The second question could be, if a person is moving with the speed v towards the, a plane mirror, with what speed the image is moving towards the object, object towards the object, okay? So this time it is towards the object. So when it's towards the object, I need to take the relative speed between the two. Whenever two objects are moving in opposite direction, the relative speed would be always added up. You know the sum rule, the answer would be 2v. So if the question is with what speed image will be moving towards the object, answer would be 2v. Kanishka, your mic is on. And if it's velocity, if the question is velocity, then the answer would be 2v, minus 2v. In that case, the answer would be minus 2v. Perfect. Then, you generally come across question like this. In order to see yourself completely in a plane mirror, what is the minimum or the smallest size of mirror is required? If you want to view yourself completely in a mirror, then what is the smallest size of the mirror which is required? And the answer is always L by 2, half your height. So whenever you want to, Anand Verma is not three feet. It will be half of your height. Depends, you know. It will depend upon the person. Half of the height. Not in any mirror or only plane mirror. Plane mirror. Otherwise, in any mirror, it will be very complicated to calculate. Because in that case, radius of curvature, focal length will also come into picture. So those. Hardcore question will not be there, but in the case of plane mirror, you have to have a length of the mirror which is half of the height of the person. Now, a simple question for you. Suppose there's a mirror of height, 50 centimeter length. It is placed at a height 50 centimeter from the ground. There's a mirror of height 50 centimeter and it is placed 50 centimeter above the ground and there's a person which is standing at a distance 2 meter or 200 centimeter from the mirror and his eye is at a height say 120 centimeter height of the eye of the person eye of the person because ultimately the image will be formed in the eye of the person is it a height 120 centimeter the question is what is the length of the patch of the floor visible to that person? The question is, what will be the length of the patch of the floor visible to the person? It's based on simple law of reflection from a plane mirror. Understood the question? A person whose eye is at height 120 centimeter is at a distance 200 centimeter from a plane mirror of length 50 centimeter. Lower edge of the mirror is at height 50 centimeter. What is the maximum length of the floor visible to the person? Try this question. Try this question. You have to use simple law of reflection, which we have studied in 10th class. So in this situation, what we do is we take two ray, one ray from the top edge of the mirror, like this. We know that it will be reflected in such a way that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Therefore, this will also be 
theta. Another ray you take from the eye of the person. Again, the same concept, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. This is phi. This is the floor of the patch, which is visible to the person. This is you are supposed to find. AB is the length of the floor, which is visible to the person. How do we find this? Simple tan theta. Okay, this is uh, x. This is y. So the required answer is what? The required answer would be 200 plus y minus x. This is your required answer. Isn't it? Is that okay? So AB would be 200 plus y minus x. 200 plus y minus x. How do you find y and x? If I take this right triangle, what is tan theta? Tan theta would be this, which is 20 divided by the base, which is 200. Perpendicular by base. Then you find tan theta in the bigger triangle. In the bigger triangle, tan theta would be 100 divided by this entire length, 200 plus y. Solving this, you get the value of y. Similarly, you find tan phi. You find tan phi in this triangle. In this triangle, what is tan phi? This is 50. It will be 70. It will be 70 by 200. And tan phi in this triangle would be 50 by x. Find x, find y, get your answer. So this would be the maximum length of the patch of the floor visible to that person. So these results for the plane mirror. Then if you have a plane mirror, you all know that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. This is a reflected ray. If you turn the mirror, if you rotate a mirror by theta, if we rotate a mirror by theta and we keep the incident ray the same, if we rotate a mirror by theta and we keep the incident ray the same, then what happens to the reflected ray? Remember this result. This is reflected ray number one. This is reflected ray number two. This angle would be always two theta. If a mirror is rotated or turned through by an angle theta, keeping the incident ray the same, then reflected ray will turn through by angle two theta. All right. Which first question? This one. Anjana, this one. Yeah, this question was like, if there's a mirror of height 50 centimeter, placed above the ground 50 centimeter, there's a person whose eye level is 120 centimeter, what is the maximum length of the floor patch which is visible to that person? So I have taken two rays, one ray from this edge, one ray from the lower edge of the mirror, and then I used Angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection, two triangles, tan theta. Similarly, angle of incidence, angle of ref reflection equal tan phi, found x and y. And the floor of the patch would be 200 plus y minus x. So if a mirror is rotated or turned through an angle theta, the reflected ray turns through an angle two theta. Then you come across questions like number of images. If, a, if two plane mirrors are placed like this and then an object which is symmetrically placed, then the question is how many images would be there? The number of images the formula would be 360 by theta in degree minus one. This is when 360 by theta is an even number. 
so uh, this if this is a even number then the number of images would be 360 by theta minus 1 and in case 360 by theta is an order number that will be your answer so remember this result this is for number of images like if you have two plane mirrors placed at an angle 90 degree an object is placed symmetrically over here then one image would be formed here, another image would be formed here, another one bisector. Three images would be formed. The formula also three sixty by ninety minus one. So three sixty by ninety is an odd even number, so it would be minus one. All right. What if you have two plane mirrors placed parallel to each other? If you have two plane mirrors placed like this, parallel to each other, that means angle between them is how much? Angle between them is zero degree. So if you use that formula, number of images would be infinite. And you must have seen many times in saloon, when there's a mirror behind you and in front of you also, Multiple images are formed, but there could be a question slightly different this way. Suppose the distance between two mirrors is three meters. There's a person, object, and it is two meters from the first, uh, second mirror and one meter from the first mirror. And they might ask you, what is the distance of the fourth image, which is the fourth nearest image to the mirror? So this object behaves as an object for this. So there'll be one image over here. Another image would be here at a one meter distance behind. The first image is this. Second image would be this at a two distance, two meter distance. Then this image, I1 would behave as an object for this mirror. So two plus one plus one, four meter. So four meter behind, another image will be formed. Third image, four meter behind. Then this image at two meter would behave as an object for this mirror. So two plus two plus one, five, another image would be at a distance, five meter. So this way you can find out what is the distance of the fourth image from the mirror. So in case you have two plane mirrors like this, but infinite images would be formed because each image would act as an object for the other mirror. Then, questions on refraction. Whenever there's a medium change, this is a rare medium, it is a denser medium, rays traveling from rarer to denser, you all know that it bends away from the normal, towards the normal, okay? If a ray is traveling from rare to denser, it bends towards the normal. And that is why you, when you place a pencil inside a glass filled with water, the pencil will not be straight. It will be slightly bent at the edge, wherever the two media are separating each other. So that is because of refraction, refraction of light. And what happens? Speed of light is C over here. It becomes V. In a denser medium, speed of light would be always lesser. The speed of light, in fact, decreases by a factor called refractive index. That is the meaning of refractive index. Refractive index of a material means by what factor its speed decreases when it travels from air or space to that particular medium. For example, refractive index of water is 4 by 3. That means when a ray of light enters from air to water, its speed would decrease. The speed of light would decrease by a factor of 4 by 3. That is the meaning of refractive index of any material. And in fact, for different colors, as you know, there's a spectrum of visible light, which is a small part of the 
entire you know spectrum coming from the sun with a visible light the red color the violet color this way wavelength increases and this way frequency increases f1 new so visible light is a very small part of the spectrum of sunlight coming to us em wave which is electromagnetic wave which is transverse in nature remember that also light coming to us is basically electromagnetic wave which is transverse in nature that is electric field and magnetic field both are vibrating perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave and which phenomena is there by which you can identify whether a given wave is transverse or longitudinal anyone which phenomena we can know that the wave is transverse or longitudinal it was in a course before covid after covid it was deleted polarization of light polarization of light basically it restricts the vibration of certain uh, light vectors when it enters into a polaroid like your polaroid glasses it also decreases the intensity of light to half why do we use polaroid glasses because if intensity of light is i not after getting polarized it will become i not by 2 wind shield of cars wind shield of cars they are made of polaroid glasses so that the intensity which is coming into the eye of the driver reduces by 50% so polarization is a phenomena by which we can identify only transverse waves undergo polarization remember this so this is the c equal to f lambda or nu lambda this way wavelength increases after red you know it's infrared wavelength is more used for heating purpose then you have uh, microwaves and then you have radio waves used in telecommunication visible this way wavelength would increase this is why frequency would increase after violet it will be uv ultraviolet after ultraviolet you have x rays and then you have gamma rays so that way frequency increases this is wavelength increases they are inversely proportional to each other so any material has different ref refractive indices for different colors for example glass when i say refractive index is 1.5 1.5 is basically for the mean color but otherwise refractive index for violet color is more than that of red color and this is the reason why we have dispersion of light because when light is passing through a prism angle of incidence is the same but angle of since for different colors mu is different angle of refraction would be different as a result it will break into seven colors that is because a material any transmit transparent material has different refractive indices for different colors because each color has a different wavelength or different refractive index for a given material so that is the reason behind this then so dispersion is breaking off white light into seven colors when it passes through a prism then you must have seen soap bubble soap bubble or a film on spilt oil 
and uh, when it's rainy season you can see the colors on the oil film on the surface of water even you see colors in a soap bubble once there is a question nata what is the reason behind which phenomena is the cause of colors in soap bubble or oil films tell me Interference. Because, yes, it is not because of dispersion, it is because of interference. Interference because of thin layer of oil on the surface of water. So when a rays incident, some part of the ray undergoes reflection, partly goes under refraction, again reflection, and then these two interfere. Sometimes this ray, when these two interfere, there will be colors. So interference is the cause of the colors of soap bubble. Then, which phenomena is a reason for twinkling of stars? Refraction. refraction. Atmospheric refraction. So remember this, the atmospheric refraction because Stars are very, very far away from the surface of the Earth. So when the light is coming from the stars, it takes days to travel, you know. And the density, refractive index or density of the atmosphere is continuously changing because the movement of air. So though, though, so the when the light enters into the eye of the person, it appears to be as if the star is twinkling. What is the cause for early sunrise, uh, sunrise and early sunset? Early sunrise and early sunset. Anyone? This is the Earth. This is horizon. Sun is at the moment below the horizon. We should not be able to see it. But since density and refractive index of air is different at different places, air density is more or refractive index is more near the surface of the Earth. So what happens is rays always begin from the object. Rays always begin from the object. So when, so when the rays are coming from the Sun, so ref refraction takes place and because of atmospheric refraction, though the sun is below the horizon, it appears to be over here. So there's a gap of two minutes. Sun has not risen by two minutes. Still, we can see it. Similarly, for sunset also. Two minutes early sunset or uh, late sunset and two minutes early sunrise. So there's a difference of total four minutes. Remember this. This is again atmospheric refraction. Why sun appears to be reddish during sunset sunrise? see that I don't know whether you have seen sunrise or not because you guys wake up very late but it is reddish during sunrise and sunset. What is the cause behind it? It is scattering of light. What is scattering of light? You have done a simple experiment in 9th class, I believe, or 10th class on scattering of light. Light particles or light waves get scattered because of the suspended particles like air molecules or you know water droplets or dust particles in the atmosphere. And scattering or amount of scattering of light is directly proportional to the fourth part of the frequency or inversely proportional to fourth power of the wavelength. 
and as such, frequency of the blue color or the violet color is the highest. So the reason sky is blue is also sky trend. Sky appears to be blue because of this phenomenon only. If you look at the sky from any other planet where atmosphere is not there, it will appear to be blackish. It will be black, not blue as we see from the Earth. Because frequency of blue light is maximum. As a result, blue color is scattered in all directions. And we see the color of the sky as blue. Write it down. Similarly, sun is red during the sunset and sunrise because sun is over here. So the distance traveled by the sunlight coming to the eye of the observer is very large. As a result, what happens is most of the blue light having high frequency and scattering is proportional to the fourth part of the frequency gets scattered away and ultimately which color of the light reaches to your eyes? Red orange color reaches to our eyes because of lower wavelength, uh, higher wavelength or low frequency because it's not scattered. So that's why sun appears to be reddish during the sunset and sunrise. And that is also the cause why do we have signals red? All danger signals are red in color because the red color has maximum wavelength. So when it has maximum wavelength, what happens is its scattering would be the least. So you have, you'll be able to see the danger signal from very far off place because it won't be scattered away. Reason of white clouds. Sometimes we see white clouds also. It is because of dust particles or water droplets in the lower atmosphere because the size is you know quite big as such. And as a result, because scattering would be most prominent when the size of the scatter mole molecule is very small. So when the molecule size is not is large enough, in that case, all colors would be scattered in equal intensity because in that case that particular formula will not hold true. So all the colors are scattered equally and as a result some clouds appear to be white. TIR total internal reflection. As such we know that light is reflected from denser medium but light can also be reflected by a rarer medium. In some cases, you have done this recently in 12th class. So the two reason for TIR is that one is that it should travel from denser to rarer medium. Ray of light should travel from this source of light. It should travel from denser to rarer. So as angle of incidence would increase, angle of refraction will also increase. And at a particular angle of incidence, equals to C, the angle of ref refraction would be 90 degrees. And if angle of incidence is further increased, it's more than C, it would be TIR, totally internally reflected. So light should travel from denser to rarer and angle of incidence should be more than critical angle. And you also know that sine C is equal to 1 by mu. So which phenomena are related to TIR? You know mirage. When it's very hot, even on the city roads, you can see the mirage when it's very hot. What happens is the layer of air which is near the surface of the earth will be the hottest. As a result, it will be the rare most. It will be rarest, rarest. As we go up, refractive index would increase. So if some tree is there, some bird is there, and the light is traveling from denser to rarer, at a particular angle, it will be TIR'd. 
So when we see this is the eye of the person, when this person observes this object, he will see it over here as if there's a water and this illusion is called mirage. So it happens in hot areas and uh, it is because of TIR. The second phenomena is looming. Looming is also because of TIR. Looming takes place in very, very cold areas. Like an Arctic Sea and other, other places, it's very cold. When you look at a ship, the ship will not appear on the surface of the sea, but it will be appear you like this. Just reverse phenomena of mirage. The because of TIR, this will be in the air, and that's called looming. Then you are familiar with totally reflecting prism. Totally reflecting prism or isolated right angle prism. This angle is 45 degree. And when light is incident like this, this way, it will be TIR from this surface. Can you tell me what is the angle of incidence over here? At this surface, what is the angle of incidence? Zero. Yes. I and R both are equal to zero. Here also. So this is turned by an angle 90 degree and this is used this is used in periscope. Some marine may use it, right? Because if you reflect a ray by plane mirror, a reflection, light is absorbed. So to avoid that, we use prism for reflecting light by 90 degrees. All right? Light could be incident this way also. You can turn the light by. 180 degree also by using a TIR, totally reflecting prism. Optical fibers. Optical fiber also use phenomena of TIR. You have a light, it's also called light pipe. And uh, when light travels, it gets multiple TIR. Denser to rarer. Inside the core, you have denser material. Outside one is rarer. And due to multiple reflection of light, the light comes out from the other end. It is used in optic, like used in telecommunication because one fiber of light, one light pipe, can carry about 2,000 messages in one go without any loss in intensity. Whereas normal electrical wires, we need two, two wire or one pair for carrying one message. That is why nowadays in telecommunication we use optical fibers. Another use is in medicine, endoscopic. In medicine also we use optical fibers. If you want to view something inside the body without operating it, you have multiple optical fibers inside the body. By some optical fiber you send light, by some other optical fiber you take picture. And this is how endoscopy is also done. Another this is also done. So, uses optical fibers, TIR. Then, rainbow. Did you study rainbow in 12th? Why do we see, why do we see colors in rainbow? What is the cause of rainbow? Reflection, refraction, and TRR take place. Due to? Come again, due to? Anjana said dispersion. Wherever you see color, that means it's a dispersion. What, Anjana? This was in syllabus or deleted? Rainbow, there are two kinds of rainbows, primary and secondary rainbow. It's not scattering also, Vyas. It is not because of scattering of light. You see, after uh, after rains, tiny droplets, they are left in the suspended in the atmosphere. Dispersion ka naam mat lena, 
no dispersion in rainbow. So tiny droplets are left suspended in the atmosphere. And then what happens is when a ray of light is entering, it first undergo refraction. Refraction. Then here you have TIR. In TIR, you see it's a white light. It's a white light. Not all colors would be, you know, TIR. Because as you see, sine C is equal to 1 by mu. Each color has different mu. Mu for red color is less mu r is less than mu v. Okay? So what happens, critical angle for red color is this, critical angle for violet color would be this. Since mu r is less than mu v, what happens? Critical angle for red color would be more than critical angle for violet color. Is it correct? So some color would be tir some will not be TIR. And then again, there will be normal refraction. So in primary rainbow, TIR takes place only once and refraction takes on twice. And the condition for TIR, uh, for rainbow to occur is that it should be sunny also that time. Sunlight has to be there and it should have rained at that time. And we the sun should be at the back. When you view a rainbow like this, that means sun is at the back because rays are coming like this, the suspended particle droplets, and then you see the colors. In prior, primary rainbow, this is the color sequence, web gear. Secondary rainbow will be just reverse. The secondary rainbow TR will take place twice, two types. Two, type, uh, two times reflection, refraction, and two times TIR. Parent depth. Suppose you have some water body and it's quite you know clean water, and suppose a coin is dropped. If the coin is dropped, you won't pick it up. Suppose your mobile is dropped in water, it's quite clean. You'll jump into it. You know, when you when you see the water surface, you see that it's not very deep. But when you put your hand inside it, it goes, goes, goes inside. So basically, the coin appears to be uppish, or your mobile phone would be appearing to be uppish. See the depth, real depth is H. Refractive index of water says mu, and it will appear somewhere here. Apparent depth is H dash. So H, I'll let me call it D. D for depth. So the formula for apparent depth is D dash, which is D by mu. A pond or a lake, which is transparent, always appears, appears you uppish because of this phenomenon. So whenever you view something from rarer medium, from rarer medium, the observer is in rarer medium and the object in denser medium, it will be always uppish because of this. Similarly, like when a kingfisher sees a fish inside water, the fish appears to be slightly uppish for him. He feels that, yes, he feels confident to jump into the water. At the same time, God has been unkind to the fish that the when the fish from the denser medium water sees the bird, it will appear to be slightly away. Apparent height, apparent height would be mu times the real height. The so bird is here, the bird is here, and the fish would see it over here. She will feel that it's very far off, no issue. She will be more comfortable to be caught. Similarly, fish is here, but she'll appear to be here. So the nature has been unkind to the fish. So this is apparent height and apparent depth. Remember this also.
then from 11th class physics you might have those like capillarity angle of contact cohesive forces and adhesive forces general questions you know when you have suppose there's a jeans or piece of cloth some little part is inside water after some time is completely wet this is because of capillarity suppose you have water in a tub and uh, you place a very a tube with a very fine bore or diameter the level of water goes up the rise or fall of a liquid rise or fall of a liquid in a capillary is called is called capillarity so various phenomena which are responsible for capillarity you should be aware of like in a plant water rises up because of capillary action only in a lantern the wick is here like this the kerosene is below but the due to capillarity effect what happens is the oil continuously rises in the wick that is again capillarity then friction you know static friction rolling friction static friction basically rolling friction is static friction only but rolling is the rolling friction is the least in the sense that if a body is rolling on a surface the point of contact of the body which is in rolling motion is at instantaneous rest with the surface of the ground this point p of the moving body and this point q on the surface of the ground they are in a, at a relative rest so the only friction acts is static friction which is a rolling friction because so when a body is rolled it moves for longer distance whereas if the same thing is sliding that this surface has a relative velocity against the ground p and q they have they are in contact they are moving with relative to each other as a result sliding friction comes into picture and sliding friction is more compared to rolling because in rolling only a very small point of contact is there and the point of contact is at relative rest then do you have some doubts of uh, some more results of maths which might be very handy for you suppose we have a rectangle of length bed b its diagonal is d area is a perimeter is p perimeter is p p would be 2l plus 2b so if i square this i'll get a result some result it would be 4 times l square plus b square plus 2lb so this is a ready made relation between perimeter this would be diagonal squared because uh, d would be under root of l square plus b square plus 8 lb which is a so if you have a rectangle of perimeter p diagonal length is d then and area is a this is a relation between the three relation between three term three terms of a rectangle suppose you have a square of side a and this is a quarter circle like this and similarly here also somebody's mic is on who is this webhav Webhav, but I think I just to make money as a suppose you want to know this area, the square and uh, the arch of circle is also arch of the circle of radius a. Then what this area x will be? so how do you find this as such x plus 2y would be a square x plus 2y would be a square right 
And what is x plus y? X plus y would be the quarter of the circle that is pi a square by four, am I right? This is a quarter of a circle. This is a 90 degrees, so area would be pi a square by four. I'm, I'm looking for x. I'm looking for x, so what I do is I multiply this equation by two and subtract. So when I multiply this by two and subtract, it would be minus x is equal to a square minus pi a square by two, right? So the value of x would be pi a, I take a square common, pi square by pi by two minus one, or x is equal to a square pi, pi is 22 by seven, so it'll be 11 by seven minus one. So this result you can remember, it might be of use to you. Whenever you have a square of side A and you cut a leaf like this, there's a leaf like this, the area of the leaf would be this. And in case you want to know this area, you can find Y also. So finding Y, I can subtract straight away. If I subtract these two straight away, X will cancel out. Y would be A square minus pi A square by four. would be a square into c by 14, am I right? But this is quite useful, 4a square by 7. Now I'll take your doubts. Sir, I have doubt in 2018 question paper. Only those questions which are not of 11, 12 syllabus. Yes, sir. Because those questions will not be there. I don't have paper. You can WhatsApp me your question. Okay, sir. Is 2018? Yes, sir. 2018, question number 16. The log of the log of 1 by 256 to the base 2 root 2 is if you know the property of log log x into y is log x plus log y to the base b to the base b. Base is always between 0 and 1, union 1 to infinity, right? This is the result for the base. Log of x by y is log x to the base b minus log x to the y to the base b log x to the power n to the base b is always n log x to the power base b. If you have log x to the base b to the power m, it is 1 by m log x to the base b, right? This property will be used over here. So log of 1 by 256, log of 1 by 256 to the base 2 root 2. So what is 256? 2 raised to power 10 is always 1024. Remember this. 2 raised to power 9 would be 512. And 2 raised to power 8 would be 256. Am I right? So this would be 2 to the power minus 8. And what is 2 root 2? 2 root 2 would be 2 to the power 3 by 2. 
So we can club these two properties, or I may write like this. If you have log x to the power m base to the power n, this is always m by n to the log x. So I'm using this property over here. So when you use this property, it will be minus 8 divided by 3 by 2 log to the base 2. Log of a number to the same base is always 1. So the answer would be minus 16 by 3. This option is there. Log of a number to the same base. Is yes, sir. That is the answer. Any other question? Uh, sir, can you explain? I have sent in groups, sir. Yanjana, tell me. Sir, can you explain the questions which have ratios of areas? Like they've given a figure inside, a shape inside, and told us to find the ratios of that. Where, where is that? I'll send a question. Okay. I've sent it out too. So, what is that sign in question number eight of tautologies in first part after and? This is a misprint like this, implies. Okay, sir. This implies. Okay, sir. This must be, yeah. no, no, this must be negation. Because the computer operator might have not found this sign. So they've used in place of this. Okay, yeah, sir. Really? So it'll be negation, you'll be able to answer this. Yes, sir. Anjana, do you sign? Yes, sir, on what chart? Okay. Okay, this is question number 18. Which which year is this? 2021 A2. 2021. Set 2. Nada 2. Yes, sir. Take an attempt. Regular exit. like this, then this is also regular exam. The chota, the baby one is also regular exam. You see, the sum of interior angles of a regular polygon of n side is always this. And it's a regular polygon, the interior angle is always n minus 2 into 180. So in the case of hexagon, each angle is 120 degrees. So when each angle is 120 in a regular hexagon and is 6, so each interior angle is 120 degrees in a regular hexagon. So if I draw hexagon like this and join the diagonals, so each triangle in a regular hexagon would be equilateral. Remember this. In a regular hexagon, all sides, all triangles, there will be six triangles. And each triangle would have the same side. It would be equilateral triangle. So in this question, they are asking the ratio of blue area to red area. The red area is this. This one is red area. The rest is blue area. So the question is, what is the ratio of red blue area by red area? This, this entire is blue. If I take the side of this hexagon as A, the bigger one, what will be the side of the smaller one? It will be A by 2 because of symmetry. This would be A by 2. So if I find The area of the red hexagon, what will be that? 
in a red hexagon there would be six triangles all equilateral area of equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 into side square side is a by 2 isn't it it should be like this whereas the blue would be the bigger hexagon 6 into root 3 by 4 into side square which is a square minus the this one this hexagon the red hexagon for the finding the area the blue one what i'm doing is i'm finding the total area and subtracting this area is that okay yes from the total area of the hexagon i'm subtracting the red one so i'm getting the blue one i think this should be the answer so 6 root 3 by 4 cancel throughout a square minus a square by 4 by a square by 4. It should be 3 to 1. Yes. What is the answer? It's that answer. Okay. Now the next. I should I send the same question only? I should the doubt is done? Yes, sir, clear. Okay. Hushi, where's your question? Uh, this is a log one. It's question number nine. Which paper is this? 2018? Yes, sir. Log x to the base, it is root 5, that is 5 to the power half. Then you have log x to the base, 5 to the power 1 by 3. Then you have log x to the base, 5 to the power 1 by 4. And they are basically how many terms? Seven. seven terms are there. And this is equal to 35. So we can use this property. The same property I discussed earlier. The power of the base will come in the denominator. So it will become log x to the base 5. This would be 1 over 1 by 3. Log x to the base 5. This would be 1 over 1 by 4. Log x to the base 5. 7 terms. Log x to the base 5 will come out common. This would be 2 plus 3 plus 4 till 7 terms. 7 means it will be 8, right? Is equal to 35. What you do is you add 1 and you subtract 1. So this will become sum of natural numbers, which would be 1 to 8, 8 into 9 by 2 minus 1 equals to 35. So this would be log x to the base 5 into 36 minus 1 local low bar cancels out. Log x to the base 5 equals to 1. This base will go over there. x is equal to 5. Remember that if you have log a to the base b equals to c and you want to convert into exponential, it would be like this. This base becomes the base over there. Any other question from 2021 paper. Sir, I have sent one more. Which one? Tim, you, you're the only one who's studying up. 28th. Sir, I have also sent another one. Okay. Square is one first quadrant of XY plane having 
कंसिक्यूटिव कोऑर्डिनेट काउंटर क्लॉक वाइज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम लेफ्ट बॉटम देर After each side of the square is doubled, considering p as a fixed point, and the new square becomes p q dash r dash s dash. Now this new square is mirrored with respect to x-axis. What will be the coordinates of the image r? Question twenty-eight. Which paper? Eighteen. Two thousand eighteen. Okay. Everybody tries this, please. Have you done? Have you done this question? Sir, seventeen. Now. Seventeen. Okay. Yes. Try is two three q is seven three r is seven eight And this is two eight. Seven minus two. This side is five. Eight minus three. This is also five. The side of the square is five. Now P is a fixed point, and the new square P Q dash R dash is. Made and it is doubled. Side is doubled. So when you double the side, what happens? This is five. Five further so will be q dash will be twelve comma three because it's doubled five and five. This is also doubled. So eight plus five would be thirteen. So this would be two comma thirteen. This is also five. It would be something like this. What about this point? It would be twelve comma thirteen. Am I right? The so side of the square is now ten. This is R. After this, what happens? What will be coordinates of the image R of the image R dash? And the images with respect to x-axis. So you're finding image of this with respect to x-axis. So you have to mirror it. So when you mirror it, just flip it over. It would be somewhere here. When you mirror it over here, q dash image would be this. So only y coordinate will become negative. So image of q dash would be this. Image of q dash would be this. Image of r. Dash will be mirrored. Only y coordinate will become negative. It will be twelve comma minus thirteen. That's the answer. Okay, sir. This national risk question is from which paper? Uh, twenty twenty two second attempt. Twenty twenty two second attempt. And question number seven. Everybody has this paper now. Or I write the question on the board. 
a man buys a watch for rupees 1970 in cash and sells it for rupees 2200 rupees at a credit of 1 year and rate of interest is 10% the the man gains how much he is selling it for 22200 suppose Now, first read the question. Tell me what's 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 happening. Is buying for this much? Nineteen seventy or nineteen fifty? Nineteen fifty. So, if he buys it for for one nine five zero and sells immediately, or maybe after some time by taking cash only, then gain would be simply twenty two hundred minus one nine five zero. So, in that situation, the gain would be. Sale price minus the cost price. So he'll be gaining this much had he sold then and there in cash. So his profit would be two hundred fifty rupees. But he's not getting his money at that very moment. He is getting twenty two hundred after a year. He is getting it after a year. He says that you pay me after a year, and how much you have to pay him? Twenty two hundred. Suppose he sells. I mean, whatever amount is twenty two hundred after at the end of year. Suppose it is X rupees at the moment. It is a P in the beginning. When he is selling the person his watch, that particular moment, say he sells it for P rupees in cash. But since the person is paying after a year, the value has increased to how much? Twenty two hundred. मतलब this is simple interest, and this is the amount he is getting. And a simple interest amount is what? Amount is always principal plus P R T by hundred. Simple interest. It is P R T by hundred, right? P is the principal. So principal, I'm interested in. This is R into T by hundred. T is number of years and number of terms over here. So twenty two hundred is equal to P into one plus R. R is ten percent. T is one by hundred. So when you simplify this, it'll be twenty two hundred P into eleven by ten. So this would be two hundred. So what money twenty two hundred he is getting after a year? Its present value is today's value is only two thousand rupees. Its present value is only this much. That is the reason. So had he got the money at that very moment after selling the watch, he would have got two hundred two thousand rupees only. And uh, this is the cost price. This is the sell price. Therefore, his gain would be only fifty rupees. I told you about uh, simple interest and compound interest in the last class. Did I? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So here you were supposed to find the present value because whatever money you want to get after a year, its present value is only two thousand. You might feel good. Oh. It's twenty two hundred. My profit is two fifty. No, the money gets devalued each year because of inflation. Any other question? Sir, I have sent you.
somebody sent me this question perimeter of a triangle with integer sides who is this perimeter of a triangle with integer side is equal to 15 how many such triangles are possible This is question number 22. Which year is this? It's 2021. 2021. All these are equal. Then another square inside this. Again, this is equal to this. And uh, they're asking, this is a blue shade, blue one. Question is, the area of the blue shaded right angle triangle is one centimeter square. Area of this is one centimeter square. And the question is, find the area of square A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D, right? So we need to find the area of the bigger one. So I can start with the side of the bigger one. Suppose the side of the bigger square is A. If this side is A, this would be A by 2, this would be A by 2. Agree? So what will yes. be the diagonal? In this right triangle, what will be this diagonal? will be under root of a square by 2, that is a square by 4, a square by 4, a by root 2. So this would be a by root 2. Is it okay with you? So if, if this is a by root 2, half of this would be how much? Half of this would be the side of the triangle. So this entire blue thing is a by root 2. So half of this would be a by root 2 by 2. And this is the side of the triangle, the blue triangle. The side of the blue, blue triangle is A by 2 root 2. Side of the blue triangle is A by 2 root 2. This is the right triangle. So area of right triangle is side square, half into base into height. So A by 2 root 2 into A by 2 root 2. And this has been given to us as Y. Area of this triangle would be half base into height. So this would be a square by 16 is equal to 1. So a square is 16. So the area of this, the bigger uh, square is 16. What is the answer? Is this the answer? Yes, sir. Okay. Any question? Sir, I have sent a number. No one else has any doubt? Sir, I have also sent a question. Which one? It is the perimeter one. Acha. And Ayita? Yes, sir. Okay. This is which uh, year? Sir, 2021. Question 21. 
for 2021. Perimeter of a triangle with integer side is equal to 5. Perimeter is 15. And sides are always integer. The sides are integers. So how many such triangles are possible? You know, in a triangle, sum of two sides is always greater than the third side. We have to use this principle and you can use integers right from 1 to 15. Sum has to be 15. Perimeter is 15. So do it yourself. You have to obey this. A plus B more than C. Sum of any two side has to be greater than third side. And you can use integers, three integers whose sum is 15. So we have a plus B plus C is equal to 15. And we have A plus B greater than C. Write all possibilities. Yes. What could be possible sides? No one tried. Sir, can, this, can we fix yeah. one of them? Like if we yeah. fix A as one and then... Okay. If I fix A as one and then B? As 13 and 2, then 12 and... Like that. B is 13 and then 2. 1. 1. Yes, sir. So, sum of two sides is more than third side. Is it possible? 1 plus 1. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> So you have to be like, it's not necessary that this is a C. It could be C also. Sir. Yeah. Sir, four, five, six. Four, five, six. So if I add these two, this is nine. Nine is more than six. Five plus six, 11. 11 is more than four. Six plus four, 10. This is perfect. Sir, uh, four, seven, four. 4, 7, 4, 4 plus 4, 8, more than 7, 4 plus 7, more than 8, is also correct. 5, 7, 6, 7. 6, 7. What? 6? 2, 6, 7. 2, 6, 7. 
So seven plus two nine more than six. Six plus, all right. Seven plus ten. This also perfect. So so three far. Three seven five. Three seven five. Three seven five. Yes, sir. Okay. So three plus five eight more than seven. Rest would be correct. Three. All right. So triple five. Three seven one seven. Seven one seven. Seven plus one eight. Okay, this is also fine. Triple what? Triple five. Five. Yeah, there will be possible equilateral triangle. Very much possible. And six three six. Six three six. Any other possibility? Any other possibilities? If you notice here, one in seven, uh, like seven is one of the sides and four triangles. Six is uh, side and two triangles and five is side and one, like it was a equal triangle. Seven was basically half, slightly half of the perimeter, 7.5. So nearest integer was seven. But if the number had been, say, 20 or something, it will be very difficult. What is the answer for this? Seven? Yes. Right. And any other question? Achad, Anjana sent one. This question is a tough one. Question 87. Which paper is this? 2021 set one. This is, in fact, original UC question. I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll WhatsApp this solution for this because only three minutes are left and I don't think we'll be able, we'll be able to get the answer now. Okay. So it's a 3D question and uh, right. So I'll find the solution and send it to you, right? Okay. Sir. And then you, uh, do you, you guys are answering those questions on uh, clock questions, calendar questions? For example, say, um, if I ask you what is 1st Jan 2023, which day was this? Can you find out quickly? January 1st, 2023, which day was that? This has been given to you. I don't remember, so I'm asking you. It is Sunday. First Jan 2003 was Sunday. Right? And if I ask you what will be first Jan 2024, which day is 2024? You know, 2024 is a leap year. Okay, Monday. See, no doubt it is a leap year because 2024 is divisible by 4. But we are not crossing February of leap year. So if you don't cross February of a leap year because I specifically told you 1st Jan 2023. So when you move to 1st Jan 2024, you're not crossing February of leap year because February of leap year would be having 29 days. So whenever you cross a normal year without crossing 
term of 29 days, you just move ahead by one day. So the answer would be one day. Lakin, if it was 1st April 2000, like today is Monday, 17 April 2023 is Monday. If I ask you what is 17 April 2024, your answer will not be Tuesday. It will be, you will be moving two days. It will be Wednesday because you are crossing February of the leap year. So next class, more questions like this. Everybody is writing this first attempt, or some people are not writing for this year, this time, or next time they'll be writing. Okay, so ending the class now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.